Okay, okay. So this is Rebecca Hyatt. Yes. Hi, Rebecca, and you're with Systems Go. Yes, I'm the so, program director. You're the program director. So what is Systems Go? So Systems Go is a nonprofit organization based out of Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg, Texas. Texas. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. not Virginia. Not Virginia. Not Virginia. Yeah. We're in Texas. Um, and we offer a STEM curriculum to high schools in five states. We're in 80 high schools, or 80 districts, rather. And we focus on the engineering, design, and development loop but we use rockets to so, do that. Like this here. This, like this one here, uh, yes. That's a nice rocket. So that rocket, if we launched it, how high would it go? This one actually went 5,700 feet. The goal for the students was 5,280. So, so about a mile high, about yeah, a mile about high. a mile high. So yes. what's the highest you could possibly go with one of these bad boys? Well, the Goddard level rocket that we launched out at White Sands Missile Range. Right, which is near El Paso. Yes, Yay. it is. Um, those are designed to go 80 to 100,000 feet. Wow. And the highest one is 36,000 plus so far. But we use a hybrid engine and that makes it a lot more difficult than using a composite engine. Right. And the students design the nitrous oxide tank, the injection system, wow. the fuel grain, the nozzle, the whole nine yards. So this curriculum that you were speaking of, yes. it's a, uh, go back again, what grade levels are, is it for? Nine through 12. Nine through 12. Nine through 12. And so is it a curriculum unto itself or is it a curriculum that's like embed, you could embed into another type of class? It really is unto itself. We okay. align to CTE takes and we satisfy the engineering pathway. So it would be an engineering course? Yes. So like uh, fundamentals engineering of engineering course. or something like that? We have an intro to engineering that they don't do rockets, but they hit, uh, have problems in nine different engineering disciplines. And they go through that engineering design and development loop with the preliminary design reviews, critical design reviews. They test their problem right. or their solution to the problem, and then they do a post-mission analysis. So that's really foundational. And then there's an AutoCAD course. We've we've partnered with Austin Community College to offer their intro to AutoCAD. Wow. And they do our, our teacher training for that. So could that be from anywhere in Texas they could take oh, that? Sure. Yeah, because okay. it's all online. Well, it's not all on, online. They would actually come to Austin for that. Wow. That would, that's a week long training. So how would a student out in El Paso oh, take that? The teacher. Comes. Oh, the teachers, the not the teacher, students. Yes, oh, okay. The teacher comes. Oh, okay. You got me confused there trained. for a second. I am so <laughs> sorry. No, the teacher comes and takes the training and then takes the curriculum. Oh, okay. With them. Okay, that's to, cool. To so they like uh, stay for a week. They learn yes. how to do that CAD and then yes. they go back. And so that's interesting. And so the, the school gets like a license for that CAD mm -hmm. program or something and like that. through Autodesk, that's free. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. For schools, not for everybody. But right. For, for right. educational institutions. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. So. That's true. So uh, the so. next level, though, is our Sikovsky level course. Uh huh. And the beginning first semester, we go through the basic physics of flight. They build three small rockets, each with different criteria. And then second semester, they go through that engineering design and development loop, and they're given a goal, and a budget, and a uh -huh. timeline. Okay. And their goal is to take a one-pound payload exactly one mile high. Wow. So it's you have that hitting a mile, that being their goal. They can't just blow 6,000 feet. That's not the point. The point is actually to hit a mile. Hit a mile up, yes. right? Yes. Not that. <laughs> yes. Hit a mile up. Uh, a mile up, yes. yeah. Yes, we want it to be a vertical mile. Uh, okay, there, yeah, there you go. Not a horizontal mile. Okay, that's, there you go. I'll clarify that. Uh, they've got to have a recovery system because the goal is not to develop a, or launch a ballistic missile. We want to get it back. Right, so you can launch it again. Well, and they have to prove that they went a mile. And we give out banners, you know, plus or minus 100 feet. So there's sensors on these rockets that can yes. say that they went so high or so far. Or so but far. the kids have to figure out what to use to get that data back. We don't okay. tell them that. We just tell them that they have to hit a mile and prove it. And so then they have to figure out how to make that happen. So it's really a, a project-based learning oh, yes. type uh, yes. type course here. So. There, is, there are no kits. No kits. No kits. So when they're building something like here, like the Jabberwocky, yes. they're, they're building it completely from scratch. It's yes. not like you can get an Estes Jabberwocky no. kit and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> like, like no. in my day, we used to have our little right. Estes rockets. and Right, now they're building it from scratch. They're building it from scratch. So then the next level is our O-Birth level and their goal is to go transonic. So they have to hit Mach 1 or break Mach 1 speeds, but they have to do it under 13,000 feet. Before they design that one though, so it's not just a stick a bigger motor in a tube, they have to develop a flight profile, a mathematical model of a flight profile in Excel. 
and they present that flight profile to engineers and get feedback, and then they can go into designing the actual physical wow. ro rocket. It's really complicated. I mean, it's like it it's is. quite involved. It is, but we want to we want to develop kids that know how to persevere because things don't go right the first time. No. And, <laughs> and Such as my it. first marriage. That well, was like yeah, we'll say that. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> but but to to persevere and to problem solve and not be afraid of the unknown. And if we take the fear out of the unknown and we teach them that failure is okay as long as they don't stop there, then we've given them tools to go wherever they want to go with. So what's the cost of this curriculum? It what? depends on one what million level. dollars. It's no, always, no, okay. <laughs> it depends on the level uh -huh. that you want to offer, and we do. You don't have to offer everything. You can do kind of an a la carte kind right. of a deal, depending on what your district wants. Um, the intro level is seven seventy five a year. Seven seventy five a year for uh, a, so whole a whole school, or yes, you know, for, a whole school. okay. So like, so that's a the curriculum and curriculum support. Unlimited us. number of students. And yes. that, okay, that's yeah. that's not bad. No, that's not bad. It is not bad. It is not bad. We've got some information over there with the cost sheets. The higher levels are two thousand. Um, twenty five hundred is one level, but that includes the launch support. So, who developed the curriculum? Who were the people that were behind it? It was like, it, obviously, you didn't get a bunch of guys and gals in a garage and just like no. put it together, right? So, no. Our yeah. founding director, his name is Brett Williams. And he was a, a marine biologist and had kids coming out of engineering school and give them a problem and they wanted instructions. And his favorite saying was, if I had instructions, then I don't need the engineer. Yeah, because then I'm making a recipe and right. not a, yeah, that's right. Right. So he got into education and decided there had to be a different way to educate kids, was given a principles of technology course, and this was in 1996 was given a principles of technology course, asked the kids what they wanted to build, and that's where the rockets came from. So in 2006 is when the nonprofit was formed and we started replicating and training teachers. So I, I'm assuming there's a website, yes. www.systemsgo.org, of yes, course. that's it. And so does that website also have like, because uh, I've never been to it, so does it have pictures of successful launches oh, yes. and videos and, and things like that? And some not so successful launches. But that's good too because that's yes. that's learning about the programs as well. Well, many times if it if a rocket fails, if it goes up and it doesn't meet its goal, the kids have invested so much time in it that they will delve more deeper into that rocket and figure out why it didn't work. Even NASA has had failures. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so and SpaceX. That's and, right. You know, Blue Origin, I mean, Failure is a part of success. It's and all those guys, life. SpaceX, Blue Origin, they're all at near El Paso. Yes. They're all they like, sure. they're all out in the, the vast spaces of <laughs> southern yes. New Mexico and West Texas. And yes, so they are. that's and kind of interesting that that little area is popping with space flight out there. I know. Well, that's a great area for it. It is. It is. I mean, it's, you know, the landscape kind of lends you're, itself. You're, yes. You're, you have a. a <laughs> Uh, less of a chance of hitting something important yes. so that's a <laughs> yes. if it doesn't well, work we, we have three launch venues in texas and one in new mexico there's one in jowl new mexico um, and we do all the launch support we require that our students use a hybrid engine so that they don't have anything that blows up or can blow up on their right campus don't want dead students that's always uh, bad for the curriculum that's uh, a <laughs> no. But we load the nitrous oxide into the hybrid engines on site, and we load the pyros for the the recovery systems right on site as well. That's good. Safety so, is safety. So is how many students concerned. do you have involved right now in the program? Over three thousand. Three thousand yes. throughout, mostly Texas. Is mostly that, Texas. Mostly Texas, but it can go anywhere. Oh yes. Yeah. So like oh, yeah. students in New Mexico, Arizona might mm -hmm. be interested in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have twelve schools in New Mexico currently. We've got one in Colorado, one in Utah, one in Oregon. Those are like outliers. And so you have like a yearly fly-off or something like that, or yes. yeah, we we launch in the spring. Launch in the spring, launch and then the is it uh, is it live streamed on YouTube? It is, and so it is live streamed from our from the Systems Go webpage. That's awesome. So yes. like somebody that might be interested in it can watch that. Oh, and sure. so, so in the spring, sure. like in March or April or end of April, beginning of May. They're right during testing season. Good job. Excellent. Good. I know. Good. Part. Well, it's like right <laughs> For all the major tests. Oh, okay, okay. Or <laughs> or after, wink, wink. Yes, there yeah, exactly. Okay, Rebecca, thanks for talking to us today. And again, if there are
they're interested, they would go to www.systemsgo.org. Yes. So that tells me you're a nonprofit right yes, there. So is. that means you yes. don't make a lot of money. You're not no. uh, you're not making <laughs> thousands of dollars for sitting here or doing this. No, thing. but I taught the program for eight years and I watched it transform kids. So when I had the opportunity to come on board as director, I took it and I love it. And it's pretty awesome. It is. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks, Rebecca, for talking to us. Appreciate Certainly. it. Say hi to El Paso. Hi, El Paso. Yay, El Paso.